All right. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, Chastity. We got Chris, Facebook World. Good morning to you. Good morning, Christian. Christian and I were having a really good conversation this morning um, about some mentoring and, and what we're planning on doing with uh, helping more and more people out there. If uh, For those that are on here, if you are interested, we are getting ready to start some of uh, a mentorship type of program. And uh, if you are interested, direct message me. Uh, let me know. Christian and I are starting to work together on some items and uh, Greg's going to be helping me as well. So if you are interested, let me know. Uh, so good morning to you. My name is Brock Zevian. I'm a life coach, a business coach, a real estate agent, and a dad. And I was doing my dad work this morning, dropping the kids off. Uh, I'm flying out to Nashville to see my coach today. I'm um, going to be spending all day with him tomorrow. So I'm really excited. Good morning, Mar uh, Amanda. Good morning, Carolyn. So just really excited. If this is your first time being on here, please hit the chat. Wish everybody a good morning. Wish everybody a good morning in Facebook world. Wish everybody, uh, um, if this is your first time, like I said, tell us where you're from, where you're at. We love to to network. We like to reach out to you. I uh, do have some lenders on here as well, have some insurance agents. We are growing. So if it's something in the mortgage industry that you're in, put yourself out there. Let us know. Build connections, build opportunities, because this is what this is all about, is being able to meet other people. Uh, so today is my favorite day. It is Stump the Chump. But before we get into the Stump the Chump, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the spiral staircase that I was listening to recently. And when I hear some Something, I marinate on it and I try to visualize it. And then I try to see how I can spin it in life and in my own personal life. And I believe that when I hear something, I have to uh, embrace it in my own world before I share it with others. And so when I talk and I go through this, and, and one of the stories that I heard, Manuel, when I was talking or listening to it today was understanding the concept. So how many of us, I, I want us, and if you're driving, don't close your eyes, but in Facebook world and in on the Zoom today, seeing that spiral staircase, right? And so when I'm, uh, when I'm visualizing this spiral staircase, I just see it. And there's one that I was a child. I remember it was white. And I remember seeing it for the first time. And I was like, Dan, I got it. Like in my mind, I'm like, wow, that is such a cool staircase. And I see that spiral. And when I heard the message about the spiral staircase and why I share this with you is most of us know the story of Mike Tyson. If you don't know the story of Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson was one of the champion boxers about 19, 20 years ago. He was at the prime of his life. Okay. He was 19, 20 years old and he, or he was not 19 or 20, but he was one of the youngest boxers ever to win the, 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 the championship. And we all know his story and how successful he was as a boxer and how challenging his personal life was. But we know him in the boxing world where he, was a, he won 37 times, 37 wins. He was consistently a winner. And at one point, I'll share with you the in-depth of Buster Douglas, but Buster Douglas came into his life. And Buster Douglas, on that day, fought Mike Tyson. And he was an underdog by like 30. And Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson and knocked him out. I'm not going to get into the whole story of the Buster Douglas, and I will share with you at some point. But if you ever listen to his story two days before the fight, his mother died. And that day when his mother died, he told Buster Douglas, she told Buster Douglas that he was, she, he was going to beat Mike Tyson. And so the other part of the story of Mike Tyson is you got Buster Douglas who had a why on how he was going to beat Mike Tyson. And that fight took and spiraled Buster Douglas's life. At the same exact fight, the same exact arena, you had two boxers. And that fight spiraled Mike Tyson's life. 
one person, it spiraled it upwards, and one person, it spiraled it downwards. See, in life, we consistently have people who win and get knocked down, and it spirals their life in one direction or another. And it shocks them when they lose. Just as the same thing takes place when you lose in life and you constantly have issues and you constantly have challenges and constantly things come our way and we play victim and we pray to God and we say, oh my gosh, God, why is this happening to me? I don't understand it. And we get in this victim mindset and then boom, we win. And it shocks us there too. And so the same shock of winning and the same shock of losing takes place. And we both have moments in our lives and we can make a decision on how we want to take that spiraling staircase from here on out. Because the spiral can take us completely down and the spiral can can take us completely up. But see, the, the, the situation takes place when we're in that spiral. I don't know about you, but if I was in my spiral for an extended period of time, I get a little dizzy. And that, that disorientation sometimes weighs us and moves us in a certain way. And Christian, I 100% agree with you. When that shock happens, the momentum that you just stated in there. And for those that, that are, that feel something, feel free to put it in the chat here, but you got to understand the momentum of the shock. I encourage you to feel it inside of you because if it's a negative momentum and if it spirals you and shocks you because you win, 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 and boom, something happens to you, you better find somebody very quickly to help you get back on track. And at the same token, when you lose, 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 victim, 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 and boom, you win, you better find somebody as well because at that moment, we, we, we don't know how that feels. How many of you had something like, oh, my gosh, I, 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 I remember winning something and you pick, you know, you get that 50-50 raffle or something. Oh, my, I won. I just can't believe I just won. And we go and we tell somebody immediately that we won. And we get, ex- did, did, let me double check my numbers because we're not used to winning. So we double check ourselves to be able to do it. And when we lose and that same shock takes place, we go to ego. Ah, man, you don't understand what happened. We start creating excuses. Our ego gets the best of us. You don't understand. I was, I was hurt. Something happened to me. Same fight. Same spiral. Same shock. What do you do with yours when it happens to you? We all have had challenges in our life. We've all had issues. We've all won. Les Brown says the same thing, or we hear the saying like, oh, if it's too good to be true, they can't be true. Like that's, that can't happen. No, it can happen. It can happen to you. I'll personally say I'm living belief of that because it's happened to me personally. My victimhood, my ego, my life three, four years ago, hell, six years ago, it was God awful. It was terrible. And to be able to see where I'm at today and what I feel and what I do and have a winning mentality, a winning mindset. My shirt today says mindset is everything. I 100% believe it. So I challenge you today, visualize that staircase. If you're losing, be ready to win. If you're winning, be ready to lose because it's going to happen. It happens to everybody. But how you react to that is on you. How do you handle yourself is on you. When that shock happens, you better be ready for it and get yourself in the right mindset. Get yourself around the right people. I strongly believe that your environment dictates how you push yourself and how you feel, who you surround yourself and be around. So today is Today is Stump the Chump Day, okay? Facebook world, you're going to put it in the message. You're going to write it in the chat. Better have something, Facebook world. 
All right, Zoom, you have the opportunity to, to unmute yourself. All right, I'm not leaving here without two challenges, two objections, two problems, two ahas, two something. All right, so I got to have two today. All right, so somebody's got to have something for me. It could be real estate related. It could be financially related. It could be tax related. And trust me, I have more challenges than I like to even share on my resume. And if it's about a tractor, though, I'm going to have to relate to Mike Kastner because um, he can handle the tractors based off of the video and his background of where he's at. But outside of that, I'm pretty good with, with at least trying to solve or help a situation you're in. So I'm going to open it up. Who's got something for me that they like to share, an objection, a problem, a challenge, a real estate, a role play? I don't care. What do you got? Somebody, we got two. So uh, I don't want to be here too long because I have to catch my flight. So who's got something for me? Do, 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 do. Nobody, huh? Man, Everyone's nobody's... good. Everyone's running a perfect business. That's, Man, that's I mean, yeah. Hey, Brock, I have a, this is Sharon. I have a quick one. It, it's kind there of we go, sick. Sharon. I knew it. I, somebody's got to have something because I got a lot of problems. I'll be here till about five tonight sharing all my challenges. Amanda's <laughs> thinking, Amanda, I'm coming next to you. What do you got for us, Sharon? Okay, I have two. <laughs> okay, I'm ready for them. One, the first one is I uh, am working my full time job and I'm doing mm -hmm. real estate. Right. Um, how do you balance that with family and still have, um, like time for yourself? Yeah, yeah. So when I was so a dual career, Pamela's on our team is a dual career. Denny on our team is a dual career. Um, we talked a little bit about dual career yesterday. I. I'm going to say that we are going to have an increase in dual career real estate agents in the next six months to nine months, just because of the shift. It typically takes place. The biggest challenge I tell people on the dual career is a mindset is because when people come up to me like, Hey Brock, I'm going to have to get another, I'm going to have to get a job. I'm going to have to. And I say, wait, what? You have to get a job. And they say, well, yeah, I have to get a W2. And so I respect that and appreciate that when they're when they're doing it. My challenge is when they say I have to, you know, I have to get a job. I'm like, well, what about your real estate? I thought that was a job. I'm like, I considered that my job. And so one is is mindset. I'm not saying that that was you, but I'm just saying for those that possibly are thinking that, I want you to say that you're just taking a little bit of a pause to get yourself in a better position when you have to go or if the if the opportunity presents itself that you have to take a dual career. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay? okay, but I want you to understand that when you go into that venture, when I was doing mine, I was a school teacher. I did it for four years as a dual career. My goal every year was to double my income. Okay, if you are taking notes, the biggest thing that I would tell you to write down is you have to have the highest level of efficiency of time. Okay. okay? Your highest level of efficiency of, efficiency of time, I'm working with a team. Um, and the team leader right now in Florida does not like me because I'm relentless to him on his time management. It's terrible. Okay. If, even if he was on here, he would give me the thumbs up saying you're right. Okay. So your efficiency of time. And so if you're lacking in family time, if you're lacking in whatever it is, just make an appointment, make it an appointment. I mean, Wendy and I had date night on Tuesday and it was an appointment that we set aside to ourselves because we knew if we don't put it in our calendar and set it, it doesn't happen. And I'm religious on my calendar. I have to be because I'm pulled in many different directions. And I, I think when I get done talking to my coach tomorrow, he's probably going to make me feel like a little peanut and tell me like I have so much more to grow and I'm going to have to really even, you know, look at cut the fat off the bacon even more on my calendar and what I do. And so as long as it's in your calendar and Sharon, what I would say to you is send me your calendar. Okay. okay. Email me your calendar and I will take a look at your calendar and I will help you be efficient with your time. What I say to people though, when, when I ask them to send me their calendar, they have to do it consistently. Meaning I need to see your calendar consistently. Gary Keller used to say many times that I could tell how you are based off of your calendar. 
I can tell your activity level based off of your calendar. Okay. A lot of us have a lot of blank holes in our calendar, which means we're not doing income producing activities, which makes us money. A lot of us do. And Mike Kastner knows me very, very well when I say I am a very big between income servicing and income producing. Many of us do income servicing activities thinking that's making us money. It's income producing activities that makes us money. And we don't spend a lot of time on that. The 80-20 rule. So when you're a dual career, you have to be extremely efficient with your time with dealing with um, uh, your, your income producing activities. Like Saturdays and Sundays have to be completely jammed up. You save your appointments to Saturday and Sundays. You work in the evenings. Many times people are working anyway, so that's the time period that you do it. But you really have to have your efficiency of time and time management down to a T when you are a dual career. And okay. send me your calendar. I'd be more than happy to look at it and help you with it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. The second one is really quick. Well, it may not be quick to answer, but quick to ask. Mm-hmm. When um, starting the business as an agent, um, is it better to be an LLC or uh, is it better to be a corporation? Which is best with taxes? So the biggest thing when it comes time for newbies, I, and I say this very, very nicely to you, but it, it, it's across the board. Okay. Mm-hmm. When people say to me, Hey Brock, I haven't, I'm thinking about an LLC or corporation. I said, not a problem at all. That's a great idea. How much money have you made this year? <laughs> well, I, I haven't made any money yet. And I say, okay, well, how about we do this? Why don't you make money? And then we can have this conversation. And I, I, I get it that you want to start like, hey, how do I want to do your taxes? How do I do it? I, I, I primarily tell people to talk to their accountant because there's so many different things between LLC, S corporation, incorporating yourself, what you want to do. Some people want to do property management. Some people want to do investment type purposes. You know, I do, I I have a couple LLCs on my companies and what I do between my coaching, my real estate and some investment type of stuff. So it just varies. You know, there's expenses to LLCs. You got to pay, you know, you got to do your annual dues, your annual review. So there's a lot of different things. And when people start saying, oh gosh, I didn't even know it cost money to be able to do that. That's why I say you got to make money before you can, before you can make that decision. And Mm -hmm. Um, it, it, it just really all depends. And I would say, talk to your accountant. When I was a W-2, you know, I was dealing with two, several different, uh, I had my W-2 income and then I had my real estate income. And so I talked to my accountant, she set me up in a, in a corporation and then we, I had some investment properties and so it became a C-corp. So my losses, I'm not a trained professional in that. I would just tell you that first is the first problem is let's make any good money. And then you can have that conversation. And maybe when you get your first paycheck, the best thing to do is allocate your money where they tell you 20% for savings, 20% for taxes. Everybody has their own tax bracket. So everybody can choose what they want, their percentages. Once again, it all depends on their accountant. And then, you know, they, they say the more successful you are, the more money you make, the less you should live off of. So like a lot of your millionaires only live off of 30% of their income. Okay, but we can't do that when we're not ma- when we're making fifty thousand dollars a year. We're like, well, I, I, I can't live off thirty percent. Okay, well, I, I get that. So you have to make sure that you're figuring out your percentages. And for those that want to know the percentages, by all means, you can email me, direct message me. I can share with you what my percentages are, so you can see how much I put away for taxes, how much money I put away for tithing, how much money I put away for savings. I've put more money away from tithing recently than I've done in my entire life. And not only does it make me feel good, but literally the return, not because I do it for a return, but like... Tony Robbins has a really good story on what he did with it, all his $9 he had and needless to say where his income is today. So I hope that helps you answer that question, Sharon. Yes, that was perfect. Thank you. All right. And now, can you drop your email or? Yep, I'll put it in there. You can also hit Thank me up you. on Facebook as well, um, okay. but I'll put it in the chat so that way you guys have it. All right. All right. Um, Let me just take a look really quickly. If somebody has anything they'd like to add or say, I'm going to look at the chats and then we are going to dive into uh, the day today. I just put my email in the uh, group chat. LSEs and corporations are legal entities, which is separate from tax responsibility. 
recipes. So um, once again, I, I, I would thank you, Christian. I would go into having a conversation with your accountant. Uh, I know Mike Kastner on here is really good in the business aspect of things too. So he is on here. His his name is in here, Elf Heffy. I don't know. He's the <laughs> one that's spelled E L H E F E on here. He changes he changes his name weekly, but uh, if you see him, you can reach out to him. But Mike Kastner is very smart in that uh, aspect of things. Um, hey, hey Brock, I, I had a thought when you were talking about the the spiral staircase and the momentum. Uh, to share it real quick. Um, my wife and I used to go to Big Sur every year for our, our anniversary. And this last year we were there, we we do a hike. We go to this spot that was a lookout. So we'd be like a couple thousand feet above a valley. One of the things we saw that was really cool is we saw the, I think there were vultures, but they were real down low in the valley. And what was cool is we were watching them and it, and it only took a couple minutes because they caught the draft and they were doing a spiral. And once they caught that draft, they didn't even have to do any work. All they had to do was keep their wings spread. And they were up like, they went from a couple thousand feet below us to like 5,000 feet above us within literally minutes. And just remind me of your spiral staircase because they caught that momentum. And once they had that momentum and they're doing that spiral catching, you know, the wind coming up from the valley, they're able mm-hmm. just to coast. And then from there they took off and they went in their own directions. But I just thought about that, you know, image and that scenery that I saw while you were talking about your, uh, your meeting. And isn't it funny when you think how many birds were there? More There's than like one? Three of them, yeah. Yeah. And there was probably one of them who learned how to do that and mm-hmm. shared it with the others because, you know, when we're born, we have to absorb and, and absorb things, but there's always somebody that helps us or somebody like, hey, guys, try this out. Let's get our wings out and let's do this. And we get into this moment in this in momentum, it takes shape. And then those three teach other people and teach other people. And so I loved your story and, and thank you very much for sharing because that's exactly how it is. It's, it's that momentum. And then it just takes them right up. Um, real quick, cause it's eight 40, uh, Amanda asked about, you know, she wants to do a charity event and we get this question quite a bit for those that move into a new location. I don't have a lot of data. I don't have a lot of people. I'm trying to build contacts. How do I do that? Christian was one of them that came into this area from California. A lot of people say to me, like, what do I, how do you build that data? Okay. When I'm building contacts for me, especially when I'm starting teams in different States, the first thing I do is I just get the expired and I get the for sale by owner list because I can instantaneously get people's information, their emails, their phone numbers, and I just start talking to them and calling them. That's literally what I do and how I build relationships. The other thing to do is go to Facebook groups, go into them. And like if you're big into like cycling, if you're big into mo- uh, golfing, if you're big into boating, if you're big into uh, like there's the mother's group that's mothers in Morrisville. There's different things, especially in this area. Go to Facebook and engage with groups. Go into subdivisions. Go into neighborhoods. Join their groups. If you live into a subdivision, an apartment complex, a church, all those things. Go into those Facebook groups. Start engaging. People ask questions all the time. Go into like online um, like marketplace or go into like um, the one of them, Huntersville yard sales, go into yard sales. People ask questions all the time and do things, become that point of contact. Hey, go over here. Yeah. This restaurant is really good. And you can engage that way and get people's contact information and people saying, Hey, go ask this person. Like, like obviously since I coach and I train people, like people refer me, I was just telling Christian, I just received a great referral guys in Colorado. I was referred from another person who doesn't live in North Carolina. And the person I'm, I'm, that I was asked to mentor is in Raleigh. Like it's because I, I'm engaging. I'm out there. I have conversations and then people start to know you. And then they're like, you got to talk to that person. So that would be the best thing that I could say to you. And hopefully that helps answer that question, Amanda. So guys, it is 842. I love Stump the Chump. I love your questions. If you have something, reach out to me in Facebook. We got our Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, Brock Zevian's Motivational Mindset and Coaching Group. Join us on that. In the Zoom world, thank you for some of the new people that are on here. Looks like I see uh, Glenn's a uh, person on here. Manuel, thank you so much. Those that I that I see regularly, I appreciate you. Claudia, I hope you're doing well. Pamela from Houston, thank you so much. Uh, Facebook world, we will see you tomorrow. Christian will be leading us. I will be in Nashville with my coach, so join us tomorrow in um, 
uh, on there. Facebook, you're going to have to be on Zoom, though. I won't be able to do because I can't do it on my cell phone. So we will just be on Zoom tomorrow. So just to give people a heads up, let other people know that you'll need to be on Zoom tomorrow because I'll be doing it from Nashville and I can't, I won't be on my computer to do both. So Facebook world, thank you so much for being on here. If you liked what I had, please heart it, like it, comment on that. Give us a thumbs up. I love the engagement. I love the opportunity to be able to help you and grow your business, um, whatever that might look like. So please give us a thumbs up, like us, whatever that looks like. Manual, thank you so much. Uh, Zoom, I'm staying with you here as we get into our day. Facebook world, thank you so much.